Hey you, someone told me of your art. I love your site, the subjects you choose, the stuff you use. I hear you made one of me. I would love to see it. Thank you, Jason. You are an amazing artist, Rosie O'Donnell. Sweet. Uh, sorry, Rosie. You're not the only pushy dyke who loves Jason Messier's work. Yeah, it's true. A no-name like me did get first dibs on Rosie's junk food portrait. But that was back then. Now, celebrities are all over Jason. Just take a look at his inbox. We just kind of had a little email friendship and she actually bought another art piece of mine, the Phyllis Diller piece, all made out of Phyllis Diller's junk. And then uh, me and Adam are gonna go on our cruise in July. This is the portrait I'm gonna be doing from one of the first with Rosie's movie when they all had their pirate outfits on. This is called The Had It. This is, um, you can get this on rosie.com and she designed this. And you just wear it. It helps keep your hair out of your face when you're working. <laughs> and you can wear it many ways, but I just wear it like the, um, like let's get physical. Welcome to Pennsylvania. This is my friend Jana Davis's house, and uh, when she bought this house, she had a bunch of her artist friends help design different rooms and do different parts of it. So this was actually a five-year project where I claimed the hallway, the stairway. Um, at the beginning, we didn't really know how long this was all going to take. We just sort of went for it. One of the wonderful things about this project was it sort of segued me out of day jobs. Like this was basically an artistic day job. My early celebrity stockings, this is so bad. This is my scrapbook I made. That's Denise Miller. I wrote favorite actress in TV series. And I, I started this whole scrapbook. It's just look, I cut out every little picture and um, every time it was on TV. Thanksgiving, for instance, when I have to baste the turkey, and then I see there it is glued on this Morgan Fairchild piece. She sent me a bunch of her stuff to do her portrait, like this one um, Christian Dior makeup, which uh, I was really happy because that color, I, I looked through thousands of pictures, and there was the one magazine cover on People where she was wearing this bathing suit. And it was like, is she too sexy for TV, was the whole article. So I knew I wanted to do that picture. And then when I saw that color, I just confirmed like that was the right choice. So, because um, it had to be this electric blue. And then a lot of the stuff she sent me, all this white like hairspray and sun protection. <laughs> all the little white lotion and all this, that kind of stuff was hers. Her lips are made from this red packaging from some makeup she sent me. He definitely had this incredible knack for taking these abstract objects and putting them together and making you absolutely see the essential details of a face where he always gets the jawline exactly right or the squint of an eye or an eyebrow arch. And his portraiture with these objects is pretty incredible. Jason had a piece in the show called Bad Santa, and it was uh, a mosaic of garbage and trash and detritus, and it's kind of like the, the line between collage and mosaic kind of blurs, but it certainly fit well into what I considered badass mosaics. So I did the bean and noodle art for quite a while. Then I kind of moved into the candy because I was wanting to see more color. 
and I also then started working with the yarn and other things like plastic flowers and fingernails. And, and then finally I just started working with everything all mixed together. And I would imagine these were the objects of certain people, like say the burning bed one. I was imagining like this was all the stuff in her house, their matches that she caught the bed on fire with. Or, so I, I would just imagine all that stuff. And then I got the idea like why don't I just ask people for their stuff. And now that's all I do. I'm just sending out letters, emails, pretty much just stalking all the celebrities I can think of. She's just been an inspiration for a long time. I have all her records. I love listening to them, even if they drive everybody else crazy. <laughs> what I like about this one is her eyes, the mascara. It's like only mascara. Can't see anything else but the mascara brushes. And I like her little bling blings, her rings and stuff. I fucking love my portrait. I'm overwhelmed. I mean, it's unspeakably beautiful. I don't know what to say. It's going to sound like I'm overacting. I love you so. I'm more inspired, strangely, by just like television and movies and the um, performers, you know, the actors. Most of my inspiration comes from that. Like, even if it's someone's role in a movie, say it's like Elizabeth Berkeley and Showgirls or something, where it just fuels a whole inspiration and obsession to creating art about it. I had the, the swimsuit portrait was at Yerba Buena where it was on a pedestal and you would look over from the balcony and then you would see the image. So I think I sent her a letter saying like, would you like come for the night and like lay in the piece when we take the picture? So like she would be one of the elements in the picture made out of her stuff. I mean, it's a good idea, but um, of course that's ridiculous to think she would do that. Pretty much her and John Travolta were the icons of the time. I really appreciated that she was just an independent thinker. She went on, she basically broke all the rules. She did, you know, movies and um, Broadway that people were criticizing that she couldn't do, and she did it. And I like that she's an artist. Um, she's a sculptor, a painter. So I just like that she just, she had that fame and, you know, gorgeous looks and she just kind of went her own way it was just sort of like fuck you I'll do I'm doing my path it took so long to finish one piece that I realized I have to really make sure I'm doing people that I'm interested in and like it's important enough to me I love saying Heidi Fleiss is gonna send me her stuff but I, she might have dropped me I don't know I like that it's handwritten and then um, Xeroxed I sent a letter to Oprah, um, but more a care of her assistant, sort of like, this could be a present for Oprah. You need a unique gift or, you know, trying to, like Oprah's not going to get her mail and, she, and everyone's, she's not going to do it. She's busy and she's just not going to do it. She was too cheap to buy it. That's all I know. I like all the ham bits and the rectal syringe. I'm working on the dog over here. All these headlines are from her death. This kind of stuff, I'll just use the hot glue. This part I worked out already. Um, there's, um, it's on a piece of felt, and then there's pipe cleaners and jewels. Her tongue is a part of a Beyonce CD that's just broken off, and then her teeth. Um, little buttons and jewels and then there's some little pearls like make up the um, bottom teeth I've already drawn a little line where it's gonna go Bar 
Harvey Benton sent me like a U-Haul full of stuff. I have, it's take, taking up my whole studio and I, I love it. There's just so much stuff. I did one portrait of her, which she has. Four more I have to make because I've already divided all this stuff. One box is all like those yellow Kodak film boxes. And then really, really personal stuff like cowboy boots, her hee-haw overalls. I have maybe 14 boxes of um, Phyllis Diller's stuff. She was totally gracious. We brought her flowers and then she was like, oh, can I wear that? And took a nap and just was like, help, just look around the house, do what you want. So we got to look at all her art. Snoop, we like snooped in her fridge and um, she has little notes written on things. And so this is my Florence Henderson stuff. This, this is stuff I've just collected that I'm gonna use too, like her cookbook and her video. Um, her record, she autographed to me. So, and then I have, this is her box of stuff that um, she actually sent me. So I've got her shoe, um, some little blue earrings and jewelry, her cassette. Oh, this is nice. I really like the idea of um, trading the art with celebrities, where like um, Parker Posey, I have a bong that she made in her pottery class, and I have the Phyllis Diller original. So I'm hoping like Rosie will maybe trade me one of her art pieces. I like the idea of the celebrities who are also the artists. A lot of the people I do are gay icons, of course, and it's just, that's why they're icons, because people can't help themselves. Hey, Jason, it's Cassandra Peterson. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I have the painting you did of me. I, I had a carpenter knock out a whole freaking wall in my office and build the painting into the wall. Uh, cost about as much as the painting. And, uh, Anyway, it looks fantastic, though. You wouldn't believe it. Um, you have to see it if you're down here sometime, okay? Uh, I don't know if it'll ever come out, though, if you know, if we have to take it somewhere, like at a showing or something. But uh, I think it's in there for life. But anyway, it looks really, really cool. And I love it. Okay. My whole concept is called Celebrity Junk Drawer. So it's all the portraits made of celebrities out of their junk, and then there's the coffee table book, and then the art opening. So it's like a whole night. And then like the people like Entertainment Tonight and TMZ and Extra, all those shows will come out and report on it, and then all their portraits will be there. In the early days, Jason would make a portrait from junk he got at thrift stores. Then he'd track down the celebrity and try to sell it to them. But back then, the celebrities didn't always return his calls. Now? Not only are they calling him, but they're sending him carloads of stuff gratis to make their portrait. So he's quadrupled his prices, now there's a waiting list. It's the quintessential American success story. Jason has become a celebrity. I'm ready now.
little card. It says, this card means you met me in real life. This way I don't have to give autographs. <laughs>